All right, real quick, I just want to get a feel for the room here. Uh, uh, parents, if you have a teenager at home, just a, applause. I mean, if you got a teenager, yeah, there you go. Thank you. I ask that question every show, that's all it ever gets. Some kind of half-hearted, weak, feeble clap. Just, <laughs> thanks for bringing that up, appreciate it. <laughs> Here's my favorite one. If you had a teenager and they grew up and they moved out of your home, applaud. <laughs> Always a lot more life behind that one. I got some bad news for you, they're coming back. I don't know what they're calling this generation, but I'm calling it the boomerang generation. I had one leave at 18, came back at 19, and actually said this to me. You don't know what it's like out there. I'm telling you, Dad, that phone bill kept coming every month. I believe teenagers are God's revenge on mankind. One day, God was looking down over his creation and said, hey, let's see how they like it to create someone of their own image who denies their existence. Because <laughs> I've read the Bible cover to cover. It never mentions how old Satan was when he rejected God's authority. My guess, 16. <laughs> Is there anything your 16-year-old doesn't know? At one point, I was going to call NASA and let him know what I had living under my roof. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said, this boy knows everything. And pick him up soon. He's going to the moon without a suit. <laughs> it's puberty. I'm telling you, something happens at puberty. My oldest son went through puberty at 11 years old. Took him a half an hour. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm on the road. I call home. He's 11. I, he picks up the phone. Hey, Dad, how are you? What's going on? What's happening? I called home the next night. That same kid picked up my telephone. Hello. Hey, who are you? Put my wife on the phone and get out of my house. I don't own a pool, cabana boy. And they're all different. My youngest son was 6'2", 230 pounds, 13 years old. This man-child walked around us for weeks. His voice never dropped. Hey, man, what are you doing? What are you... Come on, how do you keep a straight face during that phase of development? He'd yell at his brother. We'd have farm animals showing up at our back porch, standing in the middle of a hall. Get out of my room! Dad, he's in my room, he's touching my stuff. <laughs> hey, dial it down, there's two goats on the porch asking for you. <laughs> oh, that's funny, Dad. Hey, 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 hey. Why don't you put that one in your dumb show? Hey, hey, hey. So I do. That's right. And the talk, every father that had a son in this room knows what the talk is. So you sit him in a chair as a boy, when he gets out of that chair, he's a man, because for the first time in his life, he hears the truth, the facts of life. You look him right in the eye. Boy, you've got to quit eating all the food in this house. <laughs> Slow down, there's five of us here. We feel like we're in competition for that food with you. This is an American home, not the Serengeti. There'll be more food tomorrow. <laughs> Save some for that little brother of yours. He's so skinny, he fell down a sewer grate. <laughs> he did, thank God he was wearing his bike helmet. He didn't fall all the way through. <laughs> those, those bike helmets save real lives. So glad the legislators gave us bike helmet laws. I grew up in America before the lawyers took it over and ruined it. In my day, if a kid fell off the monkey bars and chipped a bone, that was funny. And if he was stupid in the process of falling off the monkey bars, his father punched him for being stupid. <laughs> That's right. See, stupid was frowned upon in my day. Wasn't rewarded with million-dollar court settlements. I'll give you an example of stupid in my life. I was a young lad, 12 years old. Someone told me to get a ball jar, canning jar. You know what those are? Find some dry ice and put it in the jar, put the lid on it. I said, what's going to happen? They said, it's going to blow up. I was 12. Cool. What's dry ice? <laughs> ice cream man has dry ice. So one day, I run out with my ball jar. I hear the ice cream man coming. I ask him, you got any dry ice? He goes, what's going to do with it? I'm going to put it in his jar, put the lid on it, and it's going to explode. Ice cream man says, cool. Here's your dry ice. <laughs> That's the America I grew up in. That's right. Thank you. And of course, that night, my mother sat at the kitchen table picking shards of glass out of my forehead <laughs> when my father walked in and said, how'd that happen? Someone told me you put dry ice in a ball jar, it'll blow up. So knowing that, you were staring at that jar till it blew up in your face? <laughs> yep. <laughs> what am I raising, a moron? <laughs> Looks that way. I never did it again, because that had been really stupid. 
That's how you learn not to do something. It hurts. God gave mankind pain for a reason. It's a teaching tool. C.S. Lewis said suffering was God's megaphone. We're the most pain adverse society in the history of the world. And I'm not an advocate for it. I'm just telling you to get over and quit suing people. Car seats, I'm tired of strapping my granddaughters in like NASCAR drivers just to go to the mini mart. <laughs> I'm going to get a hernia getting a Diet Coke for God's sakes. When my kids were little, we, we left the car running when we went into the mini mart. Hey, don't pull on the stick shift. I'll be right back. When I was a kid, I walked the back seat of my mother's car. She'd be driving down the road. I'd be walking from side to side. Sure, every now and then she'd hit the brakes. I'd fly up into the front seat. She'd toss me in the back. What are you doing up here? It's out of hand. Health food? We didn't have health food. We had food. You're going to eat it because kids were starving in China, for God's sakes. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but I'm eating it. And then we had food that would put hair in your chest. If you were a young boy, this would put hair. Who knew every man in America would be waxing their body? I told my wife, I ain't waxing for nobody. I ate sardines for this pelt, baby. You're going to lay next to it, and you're going to like it. I got to buy organic fruit roll-ups for my granddaughter. They have to be organic. Have you seen a fruit roll-up? You could patch a flat bicycle tire with a fruit roll-up. I can't imagine what it's doing to a two-year-old colon zipping through there. And then my daughter-in-law says, well, they're made with real fruit. I said, well, so is real fruit made with real fruit. <laughs> and then I got to hear about the pesticides. The pesticides, that's your issue, pesticides? My mother used to give us mercury to play with on the kitchen table. <laughs> she said, play with this. It breaks up into little BBs. Here's a lead paint chip. Knock that around for a while. <laughs> then I take a bath, put on my asbestos pajamas, and go to bed. And look how I turned out. <laughs>